Things you didn't know about Cabin Crew Part 1, let's go! Have you ever heard of the game Airport Roulette where you pretty much just pack your bags, go to the airport and get on the next flight to anywhere? We have a ship called Airport Standby where we will pack our bags, both winter and summer clothes, head to the airport lounge and wait. This shift can result in one of three ways. Nobody calls in sick, so I just take my bags and go back home. Get called in for a turnaround flight where I just leave my bags at the airport, go for my shift, go there and come back. Or get called in for a layover flight where I might end up suntanning on the beaches of Mauritius. Or freeze while touring Japan. Pretty cool, right? Things you didn't know about Cabin Crew, part two, let's go. Did you know we get paid in multiple ways? All airlines are different, but this is how I got paid. One, we receive a base salary, so regardless of if we fly or not, we still get paid. Two, we get paid for our flight time. We also get paid an hourly wage based on this bad boy. The moment the wheel chocks come off and come back on is how we calculate our flight time. And number three, my favorite, allowance. During our layover flights, not only do we get to stay in four or five star hotels, we get money. We get anywhere from 30 to $100 a night cash. It's supposed to be for food, but I spend it all on booze and going out. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part three. Let's go. Can you guess what this is? Let's zoom out. Varicose and spider veins are very common for cabin crew because we're on our feet most of the time. <laughs> It's highly recommended that crew wear these nasty looking compression stockings to prevent this from happening. If you don't want to wear the stockings, that's fine because there's a procedure out there that can reverse this. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part four, let's go. Have you ever wondered if crew take breaks on those ridiculously long 16 hour flights? Of course we do. We are not robots. When it's time for our break, we change into our crew pajamas. Then we open the secret door with stairs going up, which leads to our own private mini bedrooms. Here we can sleep or watch TV and just enjoy our break. So if you're wondering next time you're on a flight where half of the crew disappear to, now you know they're right above you. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part five, let's go. Did you know that many new hires quit during training because it's just that difficult? After you are hired, you'll attend an aviation training college where you'll spend five to eight weeks training to be cabin crew. Learning about the service is the easy part. You will learn how to deal with medical emergencies and use simulations to handle pretty much any emergency. I'll give you an example of my least favorite time during training. You see this thing? We practice emergency landings on water. So yeah, in our clothes, we go down the slide into freezing waters and we try to survive together. We also go to makeup school, men included. No, you can't use this, it's the wrong shade of red. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part six, let's go. Did you ever hear people say, don't be cabin crew, it's so bad for your health. Well, you know what? It is. Sleep is a luxury, cause seriously, you don't even know what day it is or what time it is or what time zone you're in. And the air is so dry that all your skin start flaking. I already told you guys about the spider veins. I've also never gotten so many nosebleeds in my life. But the worst one of all is being exposed to cosmic radiation. We get exposed to more radiation than nuclear plant workers. So cosmic radiation actually gets sucked in through the North Pole, which is why Emirates limits us to fly this way only twice per month. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part seven, let's go. Did you know that for some of the major airlines, if they require you to relocate, they pay for everything? For instance, for Emirates, all crew members must live in Dubai. They pay for your airfare and guess what? Your new home is for free. Some of these buildings are actually crew living quarters. Your new place will be approximately a thousand square feet. You'll have one or two roommates and it'll come fully furnished. And yes, most of the buildings come with a pool. This was my bedroom with its own private bathroom. What? Rent is how much in Vancouver? Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part eight, let's go. Did you know that people are saying that it's easier to get into Harvard than it is to become cabin crew? For example, Emirates Airlines gets about 15,000 applicants 
a month. This is what I went through to get hired. First, I submitted my application online. Then I attended an open interview day where they checked my height and my reach. Then I was questioned for about five minutes and if they like you, they invite you for a group interview. During the group interview, you get put into smaller groups and you solve problems together. If they do not like your teamwork skills, you're out. And then you need to pass a personality test and an English test. And then it's the final interview. What do you mean you're not accepting me? <laughs> I was cabin crew? Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part yeah. I've mentioned before that one of the ways that we get paid is through allowance. When we check into our hotel, we receive an envelope. And in the envelope, you'll find cash in the local currency. How much cash, you ask? Well, that depends on our destination. The allowance is meant for your food, so if you're staying in an all-inclusive resort, you get nothing. For everywhere else, they'll calculate what's a reasonable amount to spend on your meals and that's how much you will get. Most I ever received when I was on layover in Toronto, Canada for three days was $300. Things you didn't know about cabin crew, part 10, let's go. Everyone always thinks that you need to speak multiple languages in order to become cabin crew. It's definitely an asset to know multiple languages, but it's not always required. Most airlines do require you to be fluent in English. All you need to do is check the airline's career page and check their qualifications. For Emirates Airlines, you just need to speak English. Truth time. So when I first applied to be cabin crew, I lied on my resume saying that I was fluent in Korean because I thought you needed two languages. And of course, I'm not fluent in Korean. And then I was stressing out because sometimes they do test you. But lucky for me, they didn't test me. So yeah, moral of the story is don't lie.